can do, I can, you know, you can pay for it if you would like. Um, it's just uh, one complaint. Um, the filing fee, I'll also let you know, it's $15 to file. Um, and I can also include the filing options in the email as well. You can mail it in. You can drop it in the night box on the first floor. Or you can file online um, as well with Case File Express. And I can leave the link for that um, also in the email if you would like. All right. Thank you. I have filed with eFile Express. It was rejected on a technicality. So this is why I'm calling you and speaking with you personally, because I need somebody to get this through the courts for me, being that I am not an attorney. Also, I filed for the uh, indigent waiver, which I qualify for, and I mailed and printed and filled out the form and mailed it to the courthouse on 500 Indiana Avenue as instructed. And I never received anything, not email, not letter, any notification back. So you see, if you're telling me to do this all over again, I don't see the point to that. I need this to get going. Okay, well, what I can do, I can do a name search for you to see if um, that information has been initiated. What's your last name? Sure. I have a case in case file, whatever you are calling this here in D.C. The last name is G-R-A-N-G-E-R. -E this is a serious matter. The city inspector has already cited this place as an illegal blah, blah, blah. I am not an attorney. An attorney needs to get on this. And me running around, going to the post box and, and, and sending case files that I'm not qualified to do serves no purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you spell the last name for me one more time? G as in girl, R as in Rob, A as in apple, N as in Nancy, G as in girl, E as in Edward, R as in Rob, Granger. I give you the address too if you need. It's, it's Granger versus Murray is the case that I filed and it was rejected on a technicality. The first name is Heidi, H as in Harry, E as in Edward, I as in Isis, D as in doll, I as in Isis. Heidi Granger. I filed a case and I paid the 15 or $30 filing fee. I have the email notification back. I'm in your database. It said that it had been declined by the clerk's office because of a technicality. That technicality happened because I am not an attorney, nor am I qualified to be filing e-cases. I'm sure you've heard that before from plaintiffs. Okay, not off the top of my head, but I beg to differ with you. Case, whatever you're calling it, in no way, ma'am, can you tell me your average citizen just fills this out, does this, and never falls under the, the technicality reject, okay? That's malarkey, and I'm not buying it from you, we all right? Can, so it, you can file if you're not an attorney. I am not an attorney, and I did do that. You are correct. I took the actions of filing. You're right. But because I'm not skilled in the matter, it was rejected on a technicality. And in no way, ma'am, can you tell me that this is not happening to many of your plaintiffs. That is malarkey if you tried to do that. Yeah, let's do this right now. Let's do this right now. And before you go, let me just ask you to please review again for me the 
what was this email? What is this? Maybe I missed that. I didn't do this right. I personally can't believe you're having people do this on their own. What is it beyond? It's beyond the case file that you're saying that I should just have done. What is it? Mm-hmm. So the waiver in the complaint packet, you want to email it to... Um, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I might be confusing you and I'm sorry for cutting you off. I'm not talking about the waiver. I'm talking about this other email thing for the case itself you commented on. So, um, if, so if you have a complaint and you want to file the waiver with that, that you're just, you have to send it to Okay, so you're talking about the waiver. The so so I, did, I did it right. Mm-hmm. I filed with case file and I did the waiver. Because what I heard you say, so, what I heard you say was I didn't do it all right. But it, from now, I'm hearing that I did do it right. I did the waiver and I did the no, case ma'am. file. So the thing is, if you choose to file with the waiver, you have to email it to us first, and then if your waiver is approved, we will provide you with a code if you would like to file okay. it with the Okay, 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 okay. I didn't do the waiver right. Okay, okay. But as far as the e-file, that's what I heard you say, and I could be mistaken. I heard you say I did the e-file wrong. And if I did, how did I do that wrong? Please educate me. Well, let me do, so I can, if you have the trace number, I can pull it up and see what went wrong with Cloud Express, but I do generally know, first we want you to start off with the waiver process via email, and like I said, then we provide you with the promo right. code, because there's a code that you, if you're Yeah, I, I, I remember that, I, I remember that, I do remember all that, thank you so much. Okay, let me give you the information to the case file, we'll start there, and then I will accept your invitation to speak with a supervisor, but we might not need to. I think maybe me and you can resolve this. Is that okay with you? Yes, sir. Okay, let me get the case file. Hold on. Okay, I have got an email. I should have everything you need. I'm not the one to say that definitively, but what can I give you off this? It has a case number pending. Um, what what can I give you here? In the in the email, do you see the trace number? Um, it'll say like ED three zero one J, and then I'll have yes, a yes. whole bunch of other numbers. Yes, there. yes. So. Here, we have uh, ED301J00. That is all this one has. And then it has 223, it has more numbers, 223-1154. If you need, I will repeat that. Okay. Um, no, this should be fine. 
Um, it's been submitted, so on and so forth. You'll see that the clerk's office rejected it. Can you do that for me? Because I'm obviously not qualified to do this right. Is there anything you can do on your end at all? Me, unfortunately, no. We can't alter um, the filing of any sort. Okay. Um, so just so give... This... Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. I am sorry if I'm cutting you off. I'm just, you know, a little frustrated. I have no. the pressure on my end of filing with a landlord. <laughs> I'm the plaintiff. You're, I understand. I did sense that in the beginning. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to take it slow. I'm just going to take yeah, it Yeah, this guy's real bad news, and he needs to be hauled into court. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on I can get back on it. I'm not such a nimwit that I can't figure out how to change my name, but I'm afraid I'm going to keep doing the circus of doing something wrong and waiting all day and finding I did it wrong. So I don't need... Yeah. This makes no sense. So we'll do this. Yeah. So what you want to do, um, just make sure, the only thing, just make sure that there's um, full name, full, you know, your, your first and last name for yourself, um, where the case caption is at the top, and then the first and last name for your defendant right there um, at the top as well. I um, thought I did that. I okay. Tell you, there's just some um, last names here. Oh, oh, oh. I'll also tell you that there's a, there's a summons that needs to be included with this as well that's not here. I saw those um, PDFs. I'm supposed to... That's why I'm call, talking to you. This is why I went to the courthouse. A uh, summons? I'm like, what do I do with this? I need to ask somebody these basic questions. Yes. So, yes, ma'am. So, is your email address... So, the one that you have here on the complaint, um, is this current because what i can do i can email you the summons as well yes please so you can include the summons with the complaint once you go refile yeah no everything you see on this e-case whatever is current and that's what i'm going to be giving to the the okay. courts it's all going to the courts so it's current um and anything that you can see here this if i can give you some information so maybe we can do this together we don't need a supervisor um, the city inspector has been out there. It's an illegal boarding house. He has no license. On and on and on and on. It's for the lawyer to hear all of it, I believe, not you. But it's definitely falling within the courts. And me as a plaintiff with no legal uh, experience, I'm obviously not doing my best here. So I'm glad to speak with you. No, you are. But see, the only thing is the first step, which is good. This is the first step. You file your complaint, you know, and then you're able to, to speak with the judge once you do have that hearing. Um, and the good thing about these cases is that we can, you know, after the clerk accepts it, uh, what happens is you'll get a you'll get a date from us. Um, okay. And it'll have all the instructions on how to log in and things like that. Okay. So as soon as this is accepted, you'll be able to have a date and you can speak to the judge and yeah. reference to whatever is going on okay. um, in the unit. The okay. uh, only thing is just, it's only just fixing your complaint, which, okay. is, which is not hard. Just um, put his first thing, name. Yeah, so, so the thing is you do need, so you need a first and last name for yourself. You need a first and last name for your defendant. Um, I'm going to email you the summons portion. Um, I'm going to merge all of that together. The indigenous. Indigenous. The, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I really thank you for your patience with me. The, the waiver for the court fee, please. Okay, so let me ask you this. Are you, so you do plan to use the fee waiver? Oh, I absolutely am entitled to. I'm indigenous and I'm on social security income. Okay, so, okay. So here's the thing. So if you're using a waiver, you want to email the waiver and the complaint packet all together. You want to email both of those documents. Um, to civil e-filing, and I will leave that email address in the email that I'm going to send you. Okay. Um, so that you can have that. So you want to email both of those together to civil e-filing. Okay. And what happens is, um, 
in different circumstances, the clerk can approve the waiver. If the clerk can't do it, then they'll send it to the emergency judge, which is called judge in chambers. Okay. Either way, if your waiver is granted, what happens is um, they'll send it back to the clerk's office. If it's from the judge, um, you know, they'll send it back to the clerk's office with the order. The clerk will initiate the case. Um, because you may not even need to file it with case file express. They may just send it directly to the clerk with the order. Um, All right. And then we'll just initiate the case and we'll send everything back to you. You show up for your hearing. Okay, and you know, I'm one you know. of the, I'm one of those people or I might actually call your department back because I'm kind of like a baby and I want to make sure because this is so important that I'm doing it right. So you possibly might hear from me again or one of your coworkers and I have to beg your pardon, but I can't promise that you won't. It's okay. It's, it's fine. I mean, in the end, even still, if you want to reply to the email or if you need to specifically ask for me, that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person that um, might possibly do both. I might call and email. I just want to make sure that this is done and it's done right. It's okay. And also with the summons, what is this? Summons, how do I, what is that? I'm glad you asked. So the summons, um, it just basically lets the, know, lets the defendant know that there's a case. Okay. Um, that there's a hearing date and, you know, how to, how to log on to that. So the plaintiff, there is a... There is something for the plaintiff, so you do have to serve the defendant a copy. Well, you do have to have a copy of the um, complaint served on the defendant. The only thing about it is that you cannot be a part of the service process. Oh, so you can mail it. Have a process server, or you can just have yeah, you can you can have it certified mail. Um, the I'll do that. that. If you have it mailed, it has to be certified mail. But the green card, you know, the green card. Um, return. So, sir, do they have to sign to for it? I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm not letting you speak. Please, I'm sorry. Yeah, they do, they do. They would have to sign for it, but they have to send that back to you. So, once you get that green card back, uh, you have to attach it to an affidavit. You can draft it up on your so, own. So, okay, you use, this you know, seems like, this, you're telling every last immigrant in D.C. who has no English skills to go through this malarkey to take their slumlord landlord to court. Am I mistaken? Just, just mean that's just the legal process. In Washington, D.C., because I'm familiar with uh, landlord tenant court in New York City, and there's no any of this. You go, if you want to know, you go into the civil courthouse, you file some papers real fast, you get your indigenous waiver feed, you, you go in and you wait all day sometimes. It depends on how packed it is at the civil court with the judge. So, you talk right to the judge that day so and you walk out and you like have your court track. case. I've never seen anything like this as so here. Let me backtrack. So with us, um, if your waiver is granted, what we do do, the clerk's office, we will send out um, a copy to the defendant. That's what we do. Um, we will do that for your first attempt of service. Now, say for instance, we send it out and, you know, the defendant doesn't answer or something like that. Exactly. You still have to make sure, you know, yeah, you still have to make sure they are served with a copy. So we will do our part as well as sending the copy to them. That's that's what but, I'm familiar you know, with. I mean, because I've been, I'm familiar with tenant court. I'm familiar with, you know, uh, indigenous people who are sometimes not paying their rent. In no ways at all can you tell me they can pull this off at all. And there's no way the court can function at all. So I'm imagining that this is kind of maybe uh, uh, the way that it is right now because of COVID. Because there's no way you can put a whole bunch of low income and, and, and no English people and start telling them this. Like they could even understand what you're saying right now. They couldn't. Hello? Yes, ma'am. So, I mean, the only thing is not, uh, it, I mean, some, in most circumstances, you know, people are, they can do it themselves, but like I said, we just mail it out. We just have a waiver anyway. Okay. But that's not saying that, you know, All most right. times that, you know, the defendant is going to answer and things like right. that. Right. So yeah. Right. Out, at least. Right. So, no, I appreciate you telling me how to do it on my own, the summons procedure. But that didn't make sense to me because you're telling the, the people here to do everything on their own. Hey, I mean, no, why don't I just be the judge, the police, and the fire department too, okay? I'll just do it on my own. And that's crazy, all right? And that's not how New York functions. I know that. So
So the courts do take some action on their own, right? You will summon the defendant, right? We will send it out, but that's the only thing. We okay. Send it out via mail. Okay, and that only happens once the judge has accepted the case, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So once the judge okay. raises your fees and they send right. it to the clerk's office and we initiate the case, we will send your copy back, you All know, right. that you filed, and we'll send a, a copy to the defendant. Okay, and you do that. You guys do that through the. I'm just curious. You do that through certified mail too? No, that's the thing. We only do um, regular mail, and then we send a notice of acknowledgement to them. Um, addition to the copy of the complaint, which just says, you know, they they notice that the case is there and that they received it. Okay. They are supposed to send that copy back, the notice of acknowledgement. Exactly. So now, please talk to someone who's ignorant here. I made that clear. I, I'm not a lawyer. Please send me the summons, the indigenous, everything, all that, and I'll look it over and do my best. And I'll have the courts here in DC send him the uh, summons. And is it against mm -hmm. the procedure for me to send him the summons too? Can we both do it? The courts and the no, not at all. So we, we actually encourage you to do that as well. Because okay. Like I said, you know, it's not so certain that they're going to respond just because they, you know, we sent them something. Right. So, try, I mean, so it's you know, also all avenues. Everybody. You know, you right. Okay. And if the plaint, the defendant, fails to ever acknowledge the summons, and he is the proprietor and the landlord. What happens? That's left up to the judge. As long as you provide proof that, um, you know, you've attempted to serve or, because the thing is, when we send it out, we also um, docket that copy of the notice of acknowledgement. We also docket that as well, you know, just to say, hey, we've sent this out on the court's behalf, blah, blah, blah. But unfortunately, like I said, it's not for certain that they are even want to acknowledge that or, you know, respond to the complaint. Okay. And which is terrible, but. Uh, yeah, no, that's typical. A lot of lessors don't even show up for court. I know that in New York they don't. Okay, so, but they get fined anyway. This, the city will go after them via money. Okay. I, as the plaintiff. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. go ahead. No, that's what I was going to say. As long as, you know, if you do attempt to that you provide proof of service that you did try to, you know, at least serve them on your own behalf as well. And then I guess once you do get to that hearing date, um, after you file that, it'll be left up to the judge what they want to do, you know, as far as the case and things like that. Right. Um, oh, that's why I'm there. I mean, who am I to call the shots? I'm, I'm really, as a D.C. citizen, whatever, needing the courts to use their expertise here. Um, um, so actually what I'm doing, I'm searching for that um, summons form. It may be in the uh, housing complaint packet. If it is, I'll just send you the, the whole thing back um, together. Okay. Um, and like I said, I'll include the waiver and the civil e-filing email okay. as well. Okay. Last question. Um, what I intended from what I could gather doing my own research was there's a hearing and it's called a scheduling hearing and it's for rent mediation and this is what I would like the judge to do and this from what I could gather is very 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 common in DC rent mediation Can you 
verify to me that I filed for the right type of case at all, even? I know. I know. I look. It's not that easy. Okay. I don't know. I, I'm not. I know what. I'm not accepting the malarkey that everybody who has no English skills, skills or high school education, which is most is half of your civil uh, tenant court uh, people, get on case filing to do this. I'm not. I'm not even buying that malarkey. So now you're telling me that I can check boxes either. Yes, ma'am. On the. Okay. Just okay. Basically, you mark it off. Okay. Okay. Wrong, okay. Um, okay. Okay. You know, I'm gonna get back onto e case file. You want? It's, am I right? Get back onto this case that I filed, and you're looking at get back onto that website, right? Well, you're only going to use case file if you're going to pay for the, the filing fee. I did. I paid thirty five dollars. You're not using. That's the thing. Since your case was you're not um if you're not paying the filing fee then you're going to send it to civil e-filing that i'm going to mention in this email okay so the case that got rejected on a technicality because the name was not fully submitted properly i cannot get refunded for and it's now trash out the window it's a dead case well the rejection anytime a case is rejected you're supposed to get the filing fee back um but i don't think you get the processing fee back Okay, I, I probably know what you're talking about when I'm looking at it. Okay, great. And I have your contact mm -hmm. number, and I will have some sort of contact email. So I'll feel a little bit more secure going forth from here. All right? That's great. Oh, one last question. Since he's, been, since he's been inspected, and he has been fined, and whatever these words do you use in the city court, for a legal boarding house, non-license, no license, since that has been verified is in the city, no contesting, okay? Am I filing in civil court or am I filing for something in uh, the, because I saw a website where you file through the inspector's office or is this all civil court? A hearing. Uh, I think that's the thing. If you were thinking to maybe um, file a civil complaint or thinking to sue, I really, when I 
that did that case was filing for the right case. And I don't know because I also saw that the city inspectors has their own housing court, right? See, that I'm not sure. They have some sort of judge. I do not know that. Well, I saw in the city court thing, it's, a, it's the city inspector's office. They have some sort of judge that's working out of there that does hearings. That's the most I can give you. So I was asking you, does that, is that the civil court? Is, is that what's actually happening? Or it's probably the case what's actually happening there, but it's through the inspector's office. Cause this guy's already been cited and fined through the inspector's office. <laughs> Know about civil actions, if that yeah, happens. okay. Um, but you did mention, you did mention small claims, so just so that you can know, um, if you do choose to file with us in civil actions, if you choose to file for anything monetary, um, just make sure it's over ten thousand one dollars. If it's under that, then it'll be uh, small claims. I don't, I'm not looking for dinero, I'm making a point. And I, I have, when you have a slam dunk case because the guy's not licensed and he's been committing crime and all that, we'll let the judge go ahead and certify all that because it's been done. I got a slam dunk lawsuit, but that's last. What I need to do is get it into the courts. And having someone like me doing that, obviously I'm doing it wrong. I'm speaking to you now. If I would have done it right, I would have had to call. And then the number nine on the toolbar, Heidi Granger nine at gmail.com. It's the one that's on my case file or whatever. I, the one that you just looked at where I did the name wrong. It's that email. And I need the indigenous. I, I have a printer. I printed all this out. I thought, oh, mail it. So it was my mistake. I'm not surprised. I am not surprised I'm making mistakes. So you're telling me email it. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to just wait through the basic housing court. That's my objective right now. And once it's in the courts and the judge has looked at all this, that's when I'm going to file for my small claims. I don't want to do a $10,000 lawsuit. I'm making a point. It's like maybe $5,000. But if you can send me that too, I'd appreciate it. for your email um, and like I said if you have any more questions you can email me directly or you can call us I, yeah no I, I don't want to thank you I don't want to take all of your time and thank you ma'am for giving me so much of your time today it's got to have been an, an hour that I've been you know barking at you I, 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 thank you thank you so much okay so I'll wait for the emails and no I all right okay thank you ma'am yes ma'am you too Thank you.